Hey guys, Joster here, welcome back to the channel. So I finally got my hands on the brand new Samsung TV. This is the QN85A. This is the 55 inch version, 4K HDR, quantum dot, mini LED from Samsung this year, 2021. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some gameplay. I connected my Xbox Series X. Now I'm gonna show you some video picture settings and overall how this TV look, how this TV works, and I'm very excited to show you this, this, this TV has beautiful picture. So uh, sit down, relax, and let's do this. All right, guys, so let's get right into this video. And I'm so excited to show you all the features the beautiful picture and all the functions that this TV is offering. Remember, this is the 55 inch version. It sells for right now. My total price was around $1,800. So yes, it is kind of expensive, but this new lineup from Samsung is called Neo. So pretty much what they did, they added mini LEDs throughout the whole picture to the whole TV in the background. So mini LEDs, basically what it does, it enhances brightness and it gives the uh, more uh, dimming zones throughout the whole picture so we get much better contrast deeper black levels and honestly right now from what i tested from what i've seen the tv can get very very bright it's roughly around 1500 nits of peak brightness and you can tell the difference right away maybe not through this video right now but in person, my God, it's a totally different story, guys. It gets bright. And also, I also notice deep black levels. I'm talking about inky black levels that you can, they're very close to all that. So they also did a facelift on the uh, menus right here. I am familiar with this because I also own the Q7 FN from 2018, but it feels almost the same. So you open up the menus and then you get access to your favorite applications here. You can also just press and hold the OK button and then you can move them around if you want to place them back there, or you can also remove them if you want to, but this is the quick access to all your favorite apps. And also if you press down, I notice this uh, new guide and you get access to either the free movies, for example, here. And then once you click on one of this, it'll tell, uh, take you to the application where you can watch it for free. For example, watch it on Tubi and then you get access to those, to those movies. And there's also, there's a lot of more applications here. So each one, it'll take you to a different application you have to download it or it's sometimes it's already downloaded. Oh, it switched back to uh, game mode right now. I'm, I connected my Xbox. I'm going to show you that in a, just a little bit. When I keep playing YouTube, there's going to be an ad probably. There you go. So uh, let's go back to the menus and then you press left. You go home if you need to. This is the ambient mode if you want to uh, use that. Uh, more applications. There are kids applications here. Search. Digital Butler, Source, you can change to different source, of course. And then we go into the settings here. Now, once we go into the settings, uh, I'm using the standard picture mode. There's some different ones that you can choose from. The worst one you can get is dynamic. Some people like this because it's the brightest one, but the colors are all off. I'm using standard right now. Uh, I'm going to mess around with the settings on another video. I'm going to show you. I'm going to share my own personal settings. This is natural. This is movie mode. Usually movies is the one that is closer to a more natural colors. And um, this is filmmaker mode. So usually filmmaker is the ones that is dedicated for for movies, of course. And they also remove a lot of uh, uh, motion interpolation and all that stuff. But uh, I'm going to show you my settings later on. Right now I'm using standard and Jesus, it looks beautiful. Very, very bright if you like saturated colors and brightness this is going to be the best ones expert settings like i said i'm using everything right out of the box i'm going to share you my personal settings once i get more used to this 
Um, but this is pretty much how it is. Oh, contrast enhancer add-on. This one is to be in low. Yes, you notice how it changes a lot. It changes a lot. You usually turn it off or it's supposed to, I usually have it in low. If you like something, a bright picture, get this one, but you lose some details, shadow details, you guys notice. I'm just gonna turn it off right now, but you do, because I do notice that you lose a lot of shadow details. But like I said, I'm gonna mess around with the settings on another video. And then we're gonna go into, let's go to sound. Let's see how, what do we have here? Sound mode standard, amplify, just in case if you need to have more sound. As a matter of fact, let's turn up the sound. Oh, wow. There it is. Yes, this TV is very thin, but it has some good, good, so good sound. I'm very, very surprised how clear and loud it is for such a thin TV. Crazy. Let's go to expert real quick. HDMI EARC. This is what you turn on. Uh, let's go. Let's let's turn on automatic. Once I'm, I'm gonna turn on connect my soundbar. Uh, later on to see how that works digital output for audio. So this is all the settings for for sound Dolby Atmos compatibility if you have a system that has Dolby Atmos We're gonna be able to turn it on here right now. It's grayed out All right, let's go into I want to show you something else if you want to turn on HDR We're gonna go into general, right? It is it. Yes general and then we're gonna go back down to external device manager I uh, have this turned on so I can control the soundbar or whatever sound system I connect to this TV. So you select this and then you notice that game mode settings are, are uh, grayed out. It's because I'm not using any console right now, but I'm going to connect to the Xbox and I'm going to show you that. Input signal plus. This is where you turn on HDR, all right, on your HDMI ports. You got to make sure you, you have this once all selected. And then input device manager. Oh, this is if you want to add Bluetooth devices, a keyboard, mouse, or anything like that. And that's about it. So, yes, guys, this TV looks beautiful. All right, let's switch to gaming. So we're going to go down here to the menus again, and then we're going to go to the Xbox. As soon as we switch to Xbox, we're going to see the game mode on. There it goes. Now, on my Xbox, man, I've been playing some different games call of duty warzone ori uh gears of war gears 5 uh, forza horizon and everything looks beautiful it is amazing uh, the picture is bright hdr stands out colors look very very colorful it's just beautiful to play on this tv so let me show you a little bit on how to get into the game mode situation here. But before I do that, let's go into the Xbox settings. Yes, so we're going to go TV display options. And right now I have the 4K and 120 hertz option selected. We can also play at 60 hertz if you want to. And we can also play at 1440p, 1080p and 720p. That is very cool that Samsung has had this 1440p option even uh, from previous models. Let's go to 4K TV details and all the green check marks are, well, are green. <laughs> and then over here, this TV doesn't support Dolby Vision. Now I know some of you guys will say, oh, that's a, a deal, break, deal breaker because it doesn't have Dolby Vision. This one does have HD, HDR 10 plus, which also looks beautiful. I'm gonna, tested with uh, I know Amazon Prime has some HDR 10 plus support um, but yes if you're looking for Dolby Vision this Samsung for some strange reason doesn't support it I don't know why they just don't add it it will be perfectly fine but that is Samsung over here I have pretty much everything selected HDR uh, allow 4k everything is selected that is how if you want to play with uh, 4K and 120 Hertz. All right, so now if you want to go and check out the uh, game mode settings, you can press and hold this play button from the controller, press it and hold it, and then boom, you get access to this new menu. So over here we have, for example, troubleshooting, game mode settings, you can go to the game mode menus, then screen position, and then 16 by nine, this is the screen size that you want to use. These two options are only available for PC, you guys see screen position same thing 
because you also get access or you get the opportunity to play in a sort of like a wide mode, like an ultra wide. If you have, for example, an ultra wide monitor, you're probably familiar with this, uh, even though this is not ultra wide, but it will give you that option. But this is only available from PC. Man, I hope the Xbox Series X gets, gets an update so we can play in ultra wide mode for, you know, for people who has those monitors. But anyways, remember that I switched this to 4K 120 Hertz. So over here on the left, you can actually see the frames per second. Right now it's uh, uh, switching from 96, 98, 97, 99 frames per second. That's how the ads, Xbox Series X is running uh, Warzone. And then once you get into the gameplay, you can see that it, it just fluctuates depending on uh, you know the gameplay. It's not a solid 120 hertz, but it is very smooth once you're using this uh, this uh, unlock frame rate. Also, we have the input lag. This TV is right now is set at fastest input lag, and I was reading that it uh, the input lag is around 5.8 milliseconds, something like that. It is crazy. Oh man, I'm having such a great time playing with this TV. Uh, Call of Duty Warzone is one of my favorite games. I play this daily on a daily basis. And once I started playing with this TV, I noticed how HDR colors look so beautiful. Everything is very colorful and it's bright. It is very, very bright. It has over 500 dimming zones. Yes, that's crazy. That is the power of mini LED. That is what brings this to the this technology it enhances the colors it enhances the contrast it adds more uh, brighter panel and also deep deep black levels Now, I know some of you guys are worried about dirty screen effect. This is something that is very common with full array local dimming TVs. But let me tell you, this TV looks clean. At least my panel looks very, very clean and everything runs very, very smooth. There is no big nail on the corners. And overall, while watching this dirty screen effect uh, test, it, it just looks very, very clean. I don't see any dirty spots or anything. So. That's really great news. Once again, each panel is different. Even though if you buy this same model, your panel might be different. So running this uh, test will be a great opportunity for you to find out if it's good, if it's clean. You usually see some, some dark spots on the TV. Some TVs are worse. Some TVs some show, uh, show some of those dark spots. But at least right now, everything looks very clean on my end. Now, I also noticed some of you guys are worried about having blooming on this TV or sometimes it, this Starfield test doesn't look as good as OLED. I mean, of course, OLED is, is probably the best picture right now. Each individual pixel has its own uh, life, pretty much, what you can say. On, now, in this case, uh, like I said, Samsung is using mini LED technology, so it has more accurate dimming zones better light uh, handling uh, and as of right now I can tell you that there is some blooming this is what you're seeing right now this is the blooming that you're gonna get the blooming is more noticeable when you are seeing this TV at an angle you guys notice it's like this uh, this light behind in the in the center of the TV it doesn't look peach black it looks more like a dark dark gray, gray. But if you're sitting in front of your TV, you hardly ever see that at all. It looks very, very nice and clean. And that is the problem with VA panels, not just this TV. It's overall VA panels, viewing angles are not that good. And finally, I wanted to show you the newly redesigned Samsung controller. Now, it is very similar to previous Samsung controllers, which I am very pleased with this. Uh, it's very small, very handy, very lightweight. And it has all the buttons, all the necessary buttons, not overflow with a bunch of buttons that are useless. And they also added some shortcuts, Netflix, 
Prime Video and Samsung TV Plus, which I, I like it. I like it a lot. One cool feature about this is the solar rechargeable panel in the back here. This is pretty awesome. Just in case if you don't have sunlight or you know any kind of light to recharge it, you can always charge it with the USB Type-C located right here at the bottom. So yeah, I really like it. I am a big fan of this Samsung TV remote controllers. So far, I'm having a very good time with this TV. I mean, the picture looks great in my opinion. Uh, Mini LED does bring a much better picture quality, a brighter panel, a better contrast, deeper black levels. I mean, of course it has some problems, especially with the viewing angles. I show you guys how the viewing angles can really damage the picture especially with VA panels like this one but like I said this is normal from VA panels that is probably one of my biggest negatives about this to be my second complaint will be the price as of right now I pay around $1,800 for this 55 inch version and I know for sure that in a couple of months or maybe in about three months the price is gonna drop and by Black Friday it's probably gonna be like $1,300 so you know Paying $1,800 for a 55-inch LCD TV, might as well just go get an OLED, you know? So, uh, or just wait until the price drops. Now, stay tuned because on my next video, I'm gonna uh, do some more gaming. I'm gonna share my settings, what I'm using when gaming with the Xbox or the PlayStation 5. So, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Joster, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Joster out.